So, I had the idea to go see the strangest double feature I could possibly ever see today, which is Portrait of a Lady on Fire and the new Sonic movie. Yeah, that's a very odd mix. Hey, Dad? Yeah, Dad? Can I come to the movies with you? Uh, Please! You know, I just kind of planned on going alone today, champ. We need bonding time. Dad, bonding time. I'm sorry, I just... Come on! Understand, Daddy needs some alone time, okay? I just... I really... <sighs> Whatever. Thanks. I swear I'm nice. I just... I just need some alone time. Honestly, it seems like you might need to spend more time with people just based off of whatever the fuck that was. The plan is to see both movies, but I'm not sure if with my AMC member thing, if I'm allowed to see two movies in one day. I'm seeing Portrait of a Lady on Fire first at 1230. All right, I'm gonna shower. I'm attempting to cover up some zits because I'm 23 and I still pick my face. They're not zits, they're scabs, let's be honest. Eh, whatever. And we are booked. Okay, I'm here, I'm about to go in, and I was thinking, is it really a double feature if it's not put on by the movie theater itself? If I make the double feature, is it a double feature? And is it a double feature if they're not consecutive, like back to back, because there's some time in between these two features, and, Furthermore, is it a feature if I have to go to a different theater? Because right now I'm at a really cool theater with chairs that lay out and meals, full meals that you can order. And the Sonic one clearly is a children's movie, so that isn't showing here. So I don't know, is it still a double feature if I have to do all of those things? I'm not sure. Anyways, let's go see Portrait of a Lady on Fire. I really don't know what it's about. I do, but I don't. So let's just, let's go. L'homme intéressé par ma fille est Milanais. Nous partons là-bas, si le portrait lui plaît. Il a épuisé déjà un peintre avant vous. Que s'est-il passé Je ne sais pas. Elle vous attend. Ça fait des années que je rêve de faire ça. Mourir Courir. Vous allez devoir la peindre sans qu'elle le sache. Elle pense que vous êtes une compagne de promenade pour quelque chose. Que savez-vous de mon futur mariage Rien. C'est tout ce que j'en sais aussi. Quand allez-vous vous marier Je ne sais pas si je vais me marier. C'est parce que vous pouvez choisir que vous ne me comprenez pas. Je vous comprends. Quand vous êtes embarrassé, vous mordez vos lèvres. Vraiment. Quand vous êtes troublé, vous respirez par la bouche. Combien de temps restez-vous Portrait de la jeune fille en feu. Okay, I just got back from the movie theater, which is actually a big fucking lie because I went to Barnes and Noble right after. I intended to get one thing for my friend Natasha. She said that she's been wanting a map of Los Angeles to put in her room because I have one and she wants one. And then I walked out with the 150th anniversary edition of Little Women and 
this book called The Idiot. So that's what I am. It's like Target and Barnes and Noble. You walk in with the intention of buying one thing and you come out with 10 things or three things. So anyways, let's talk about the movie. I really liked it a lot. It's so good. I'm burning up. Oh my god, I need to roll down my window. What is going on? Okay, no spoilers. I'll tell you when I'm about to say a spoiler and I'll put the time on the screen that you should skip to. Initially, what I will say is that that movie is so calm and slow and I think at first people might not like that but I was in such a state that that's all I wanted. All I wanted was just a slow, easy movie, not that many cuts. Irony is a ruthless bitch, isn't she? not that much dialogue and that's exactly what this movie was and if you watched my last video you can probably tell that I'm just overwhelmed by the influx of media from social media to TV to movies there's just so much stuff out there that we're consuming at all times and so it's really nice to have a movie that just slows it down not everything you watch has to be a super fast pace this movie is exactly what I needed so if you're in need of just slowing down I highly recommend. It also was just not noisy. There was only three instances where they really had music. One was when she was playing the piano. Another was when all of these women were around a fire and they started singing. And the third moment was at the very end when an orchestra was playing. So there's really not that much music and the silence was so nice and it's also a testament to the fact that it's a good story because a lot of times movies will use music to evoke certain emotions but if you're feeling emotions when there's no music then that means it's a good story I really liked that because then it's just more proof of how much I liked it it's also such a pretty movie and it's a period piece which will be more expensive but it really had only two areas that it filmed in. It was the house and the beach, and that's pretty much it. It was a period piece, but it was done so simply that it probably isn't as expensive as you might think. I mean, I don't really know much about that kind of stuff, but it didn't feel like it was really expensive. Oh, there's a man. Hey, bae. Also, we just love a movie that passes the Bechdel test, don't we? Also, the house where they lived in, it had all of this light blue wood and these giant windows, and I just would love to live there. There were those three instances with the music, and even when the credits start rolling, it's silent. A little bit later, music starts playing in the credits, but immediately, it's just dead silent. So four songs if you want to include the delayed song in the credits. Okay, now the parts that might include some spoilers, but like not really. You can still go see it, but if you don't want to listen to this part, then skip to whatever time I just put on the screen. How Sophie keeps imagining Eloise. I don't know, they say it with a French accent. I'm, I think it's Eloise. Eloise in a white dress, and you're like, why is she imagining this? And then on the day where she leaves, she's wearing the dress, and it's like, ah, Damn. I don't know if it's technically her wedding dress, but it's the dress that the mom gives her as she's about to give her away. It has the vibe of a wedding dress. Another part that confused me, and like maybe I just am stupid, but why did they put the shrooms or the drugs, whatever they were, why did she put it on her armpit? They were just fucking around, right? Like you can't do hallucinogenics through your armpit. I mean, if you can, then something to think about. On top of the movie being slow paced and not having that much music, they also aren't afraid to just hold a frame. They don't cut that much. Two examples that come to mind. There's this moment where Sophie tells Eloise that the people that are going to take her home are here and Eloise gets up, moves frame to go get dressed and then she comes back in frame and the natural instinct would be to cut and show her getting dressed or just cut and change the angle on Sophie but instead they just held frame. It's so cool because it really just enhances that silence but it's also such an interesting choice because your natural instinct is to cut and it really almost puts you in the moment because the tension builds because we've gotten so used to just cutting but it's also kind of makes the tension decrease because you really feel like you're with them. The other good example where they just hold frame is at the very end where she's listening to the orchestra and it just it just never cuts that's the clearest example but they do it throughout the entire movie the other thing about holding frame and not cutting is that it puts so much pressure on the actresses to show emotion because you're just holding on their face for so long it's all the audience is looking at they don't have the cuts or the angle changes the inserts to distract them from the emotion that's going on in the film so if you have good actresses then that's amazing but in the event that you don't have a good actress then that's not so good and I guess you would probably cut more but these are good actresses so the moments where it comes more full circle so with the wedding dress that I already talked about and at the end when Sophie is at a gallery and she did a painting based on the story that they were telling earlier in the movie and the painting with the page 28 of it all 
I die. The very end where they're at the orchestra and earlier in the film, the two women were talking about how Eloise had never seen an orchestra. And Sophie says, I can't really describe what an orchestra sounds like. And in the very last take, you see Eloise watching the orchestra and she's just moved to tears and then the movie ends. I don't know what I'm gonna give it on Letterboxd. Honestly, I'll probably give it five stars. So yeah, if you haven't seen it, then go see it. Highly recommend. I have about 50 minutes until Sonic. I'm kind of hungry, so I think I might actually go to Trader Joe's and just get one of their small single serving salads and probably some dried mangoes, knowing me, because they are my kryptonite. Let's go to Trader Joe's. We got this salad. I've never had it before. I think I have napkins in this car. Ta-da! Ooh, that's really good dressing. What is this stuff? Oh, roasted red pepper. Fuck. The worst is when there's not enough space in the container for it to mix. I also can't go to Trader Joe's without getting dried mangoes. I might eat those during the movie. Also, I need to book my ticket. I haven't even booked it. So you can see two movies in one day with the AMC thing, which is great. We're booked. All right, now I'm eating. Mm. I just vacuumed my car. I have no clue what this Sonic movie is about. I played the video games. Like, I know the general premise, good versus evil. I just want to know if any of the friends are going to be in it. Like, Knuckles or Tails. Are they in it? I don't feel like they were in the previews, but I also haven't really watched the previews that closely. Tails was my favorite, but I also low-key really liked Shadow. That's T. Amy Rose or whatever, she always annoyed me. I don't know why. Probably because I was jealous of her. The same thing goes for Princess Peach and Daisy. The real reason I'm seeing this is because, fingers crossed, there's the Sega at the beginning of the movie. Sega! The other reason is because James Marsden actually used to be my celebrity crush. He still is, but I used to just only have my sights on him, whereas now I just spread the wealth a little bit more. Also, Jim Carrey is the bad guy. All right, I'm gonna finish eating this and then go inside, so here's a trailer. I'm Sonic, a little ball of super energy in an extremely handsome package. On my planet, people were always after my powers. So I came to yours. It gets a little lonely, but that's okay. I am living my best life on Earth. What? Ow! Let the plate Sonic! Let the pitcher's mount also Sonic! Ugh, I can't with that guy. Uh-oh. Uh... Why are you hiding out in my garage? They're coming for me! If they steal my power, they could conquer the universe. You have to help me. No, I don't. Please, it's life or death. Good morning, my rural chum. Mr. Dr. Robotnik. I'm going to give you five seconds to tell me where it is. Wait, don't hurt him! Ah! Road trip! Woo -woo! This can't be happening to me. Oh my god, stop the car right what? now! What? The world's largest rubber band ball? We gotta see it! No, this is not some fun family road trip. <laughs> eh, you're right. It was lame. Gift shop was cool, though. Whatever this creature is, I'm going to uncover the source of its power. Yeah, hey! We gotta lay low. Let me show you how it's done. Hey, hey. So, should we get out of here? Yeah, time to go. Hey! hey. Uh oh. Come the boom! Oh, give me a big fat break! That was an illegal left, by the way. Oh, this one is cute. Let's keep him. Oh, come on! You've got car insurance, right? Why would you throw your life away for this silly little alien? Good time. He's my friend. Let's go! This is my power. And I'm using it to protect my friends. Let's go! Let's go! So, you're supposed to be Tom's best friend that he won't shut up about. Okay, I'm back from the movie. The best part of the movie is the scene where Jim Carrey is just dancing in his car alone. That's the best part of the entire movie. It was nice to look at James Marsden for 99 minutes. None of Sonic's friends were there, so that was kind of shitty. The opening, they did do the Sega thing, but they didn't have the people singing it. It just went da da, but no one actually sang Sega, so that was disappointing. <sighs> 
I'll survive, I guess. The Sonic movie definitely ruined the calm, slow pace that I was really needing today. Just really two sides of the spectrum. Honestly, very nice to have a double feature where the movies could not be more different. But yeah, it was... Hey! How were the movies? They were good. Good. Except in the second one, I couldn't stop thinking about Jim Carrey and Ariana Grande. What? Are they dating? I'm not sure, but Claudia and Jackie from The Morning Toast seem to think that they are. Huh. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I'll let you get back to your YouTube video. Thanks. Yeah, I don't think anyone has actually heard of this rumor, but my favorite podcast, The Morning Toast, they've been talking about it for the past week. They think that Jim Carrey and Ariana Grande are dating. I don't know if it's true, but if it is true, you heard it here first, and I heard it first from The Morning Toast. Follow me on Letterboxd to go read my reviews for these two movies. And I guess, bye! bye.